Okay, welcome to the first episode of this series where we're reviewing Django packages. Now there are a ton of packages out there to review and eventually we're going to get into the ones that are a lot less well known but but this first episode has to be dedicated to Django Orloth and there are so many tutorials on Django Orloth which is why this is not going to be extremely in depth but what I'm hoping you get out of this is an understanding of the Django Orloth package how easy it is to set it up how powerful it is and how much time it saves you in building an application whether it's your own personal project or whether it's really something that you want to make money with. So if you haven't already, you're going to want to clone the Django package review GitHub repository. The link is in the description of this video and you can use that to follow along. All right, so I'm here on djangopackages.org and I'm going to click on authentication, which is one of the first few package categories over here. And here you'll get a list of all the different packages that you can scroll through. You'll see the first one is the Django REST framework, which needs no introduction. And the second one is the Django AllAuth, which kind of also doesn't really need an introduction, but here we are. So if we click on it, it's going to take us to some more details about this package. And specifically, I'm going to go to the GitHub repository. Now immediately you can see that it has 5,300 stars, which is insane. That's a lot of stars for a package. And there's reason for that. It says here, it's an integrated set of Django applications addressing authentication, registration, account management, as well as third party account authentication. And if we scroll down, then here you can read the rationale. And basically what it's doing is talking about the integration of both social authentication and local authentication and that integrating these is a tedious process. And so it ends it by saying here, this is the reason the project got started, which is to offer a fully integrated authentication app that allows for both local and social authentication with flows that just work. And I've used this package so many times and I can definitely say that it does do that. Now from here, what you're gonna to wanna to do is click on documentation. And so here at read the docs, you're gonna find everything you need to know about using this package. And so let's get started with installing it. So we can just click on installation. We can then just copy that to install the package. And what I'll do is actually just check out into a new branch before I do this. So git checkout dash B, we'll call it one Django all auth. There we go. So install that. Then there's just some things we need to add to our settings.py file. One of them being the authentication backends. So we can do that inside our settings.py and we can just scroll down i'll just put it over here and we can just remove some of this then we need to add some installed apps which we can do here at the top so just in here now the django.contrib.auth is already installed and the same thing for dot messages the only thing is the sites framework we need to install and then we have the all of package the all of dot account and then all of dot social account. Now you can imagine that the social account is used for authenticating with your social providers. So Facebook, Google, and all of those. Once you have all of that, then you can decide which providers you want to enable. So you can just add, if you want Google, you want to be able to sign in with Google, you're going to add this. If you want to sign in with Facebook, you're going to add the Facebook provider. And there's quite a lot here. Then we can just copy the site ID here and I'll just paste it here. And then if you need specific settings for your social account providers, then you can add them over here, but we're not gonna to need to do that. And then at the bottom here, we just need to add this to our URLs and then migrate. So we can do that over here and I'll actually get rid of this comment. I can add this over here and I'm gonna change this to a path and just change it to be like that. Okay. So now we can run manage.py migrate and okay include is not defined so let's just import that over here run that and cool so we get a bunch of migrations that have now been made and like that we can then go and run the server so i'm going to open this up in the browser and so our base url is not found because we don't have anything there but we do have a path to slash accounts so if we go there and you can see we have a bunch of other urls that we can go to one of them being login sign up, log out. So if we add that on the end here, then we have this form here, which is allowing us to sign in. 
And this wasn't made by us, this is the Django All Auth package. So right out of the box, it gives you access to a bunch of URLs inside this package. And what we can do is we can actually copy that. And I'm just gonna say from all of the URLs. And if we click to go there, then you can see inside that file, now I'm inside my site packages, that it's including all of dot account dot URLs. So what I might want to do is instead to go there. And then you can see all of the URL patterns here that we can go to, and you can also go to their views. So if you click on the login one, then it's using a class-based view, login view, and that's this one here. So you can go and see all of the functionality that they've added to make this work, if you are interested in that. But the point is that there's all those different URLs that you can make use of right out of the box. Now this is just handy because the process of authenticating users in one project does not differ to another project. It's the same thing, you're gonna code the same thing over. So the point of putting all that logic into a package makes a lot of sense so that you don't repeat yourself every time you need to start a new project. And this is really nice, again, because you have all those URLs that you can access. And it's quite extensive. They've got login, log out, change your password, reset your password, confirm your email. And we'll get into that with the configuration now. So if you go to configuration, then here you can find all of the settings, which you just put in your settings.py file. And that's gonna change the way that Django All Auth works. And there's quite a lot of things here, but the ones that really stand out are, for example, the account email required, which default is false. So whether you need them to have an email is up to you. And if you wanna change that, you can just copy that, come over here and set it to true. So what this means is if we go to sign up, then you can see that it has an email field here. If I come and comment this out, come back here, now you can see that email is optional. So I could submit this form without actually passing in that value and that's perfectly fine. But again, that's up to you. And so there's quite a few other ones here. Another one which is quite important is the account email verification, which is also by default optional. So in that case, if it is optional, the email verification is sent, but if you change it to none, then that means they won't get an email verification email. And if you choose mandatory, then they will get that email and they have to verify the email before they can sign in and continue to use the site. So in this case, let's go and copy that, paste it here, and I'm gonna set it to true. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to set the email backend which is what's gonna allow us to test email sending. And this is gonna be django.core.mail.backends.console.email backend. Okay, so with that set, what we can then do is we can go to sign up over here and let's just refresh. So I'll enter an email and I'll just put my email, username, password, Click sign up. Let's see, password is too common. So I'll just add a different password here. Sign up. And now we get the screen which says verify your email address. And if we come over here and look in the terminal, then you can see basically the console has outputted the email. And it says you're receiving this email because user Matt has given you yours as one to connect their account. And to confirm it, I can just click this link and now I'm here at confirm email address. So if I click confirm, now it has confirmed. So I can add my username and password and I get redirected to accounts slash profile, which means I'm logged in. And so the rest of these are just other settings for how Django All of works. And they've added descriptions for all of them so you can go through all of them and read exactly what all of them do. Something else which is really beneficial is the signals that it provides. And so here it tells us that there are several signals that are emitted during the authentication flow. And you can then basically go off of these signals to perform whatever business logic you need to do. So for all of that account, you can see there's one for user logged in, there's for logged out, for user signed up. So these are all different events that get triggered by the user and we can then use those signals and do something with them. So for example, let's say that we want to go off the user logged in signal, then we just need to copy this path and let's just bring this down here. What I'll do is I'll create an app 
I'm just going to call it core and then inside package review settings, I'm going to add the core app over here and inside the models. I'm going to say from all of account dot signals import user logged in and you can see the rest of them over there. Then we can connect the signal up to our own function. So it's, you see it says it takes in a receiver. So we just need to create this receiver. So we'll say user logged in receiver and that's going to take in a request and a user. We know that because it tells us the arguments over here and we can then go and print the request and we can print the user and then connect this up to our user logged in receiver and then the sender we're going to want to specify as our user so to do that we can just import from django.contrib.auth and we'll import the get user model and then say user equals to our get user model All right so like that let's run the server Let's see, it says signal receivers must accept keyword arguments. So we can just add keyword arguments there to the end. And there we go. So let's go here. And right now I am logged in already. So what I'm going to do is just inspect here, go to application, clear site data, and we can then go to slash accounts, log in, put in the username and password. We got redirected there. And there you can see we've printed the request and you can see the user. And so this is handy because you can then create any kind of business logic based off of this. And as we saw, there's a bunch of different signals here. So if you want to record how many times people change their password, you can do that. And you can perform the same sort of logic using the social account signals. But they are slightly different. So you can see there's pre-social login, there's social account added. So that's when you connect an account to your user. Then there's account update and then account removed. So you can also perform different kind of logic using these signals. And lastly, I think it's the customization of the templates that is gonna be the most beneficial for you to know. So what I'm gonna do is just go to edit on GitHub. So I can just go there and just go back here. So here in the GitHub repository, what you're gonna to wanna to do is click on all auth. Then you're gonna to go to templates and these templates are essentially what you're going to want in your project because you can then override the templates that are used and customize them in your own project. Now, the way to do that is to basically download this folder. So I'm going to download this as a zip file and I'm then going to open this up and take all of the templates from that folder and put them inside our working directory. So now I've moved them in and there they are. And so to give you an idea of how we can customize these templates, so for example, I'll just log out here again and let's go to the login page. So let's say you want to customize this according to your website theme. I'm just gonna use Bootstrap because it's the easiest as an example. So I'll just go to getbootstrap.com. I'll then just copy the CSS and inside base, I'm gonna paste that over here. And that's because all of the, the files inside these folders are inheriting from this base.html. So I can do the same thing with the JavaScript. I'll just put that here at the end. And so what we can do in base.html is we can wrap our content and extra body with a div. And this div is gonna have a class of container. So I'll say class container. Now, in order to make this work, we just need to add something in our settings.py. So let's go to package review settings and we're going to need to go to the templates and add a directory. Here. So we're going to say os.path.join base directory with the templates folder. And this is basically what's going to allow us to override the existing templates using our own templates. So if we come back and refresh here, now you can see all that style was applied because it's using our template and not the packages template. And so this really should just give you an idea of what you can do because now you have complete control of the template. So you can go into login.html and completely change this file. Of course, you'll want to keep some of the things like what's being loaded in, the get providers, the social account providers, if you're using them. So I'd recommend keeping that, but the actual style itself, you can obviously change that. And that's really something important to know about using this package. But as you can see, it's quite easy to set it up to get all their templates and work off of that.
And so that really concludes this review of the Django All Auth package. As I've said, there are so many tutorials, not only on YouTube, but articles of how you can set it up. But if you're new to the package, now you at least are aware of it. You can see the functionality of it. And personally, I've used it in almost all of my projects, not only for pure Django applications, but also for REST APIs because of other third-party packages that you can use to allow authentication via your REST API, which ultimately uses Django All Auth. So there's a lot that you can build on top of this to use in other ways. So I definitely recommend it for any kind of project you're building with Django. And so other than that, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.